won Best Picture, the category at the Academy Awards that is the cause of much civilized discourse and annoying yelling. Since the inception of the Oscars, Western films told in the English language have been the recipients of Best Picture. Yes, there was Francis the Artist, but that was silent, so no language to be heard. Also, it's a movie about Hollywood, and we all know Hollywood loves to jerk itself off, so of course the Oscar goes too. But there's one film that, for me, is truly an outlier. Parasite. <laughs> Uh, actually, no, that's not what I'm talking about here. I know, shocking. But go back 10 years. And the Oscar goes to Slumdog Millionaire Christian Coulson producer. Slumdog Millionaire is a 2008 British drama loosely adapted from Vika Swaroop's 2005 novel Q&A. The story follows Mumbai local Jamal Malik, a contestant on India's version of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire called Kon Banega Kuripati. When he's suspected of cheating, we follow him through his past to discover how he had all the answers. The movie was told in both Hindi and English. Slumdog Millionaire received widespread critical acclaim and was nominated for 10 Academy Awards, including Best Picture. Hmm, sound familiar? The movie was met with widespread critical acclaim. It was nominated for 10 Academy Awards, including Best Picture. Yeah, I thought so too. But spoiler alert, Slumdog Millionaire got a much happier ending than Roma did. The success stories of Slumdog Millionaire and Roma are too similar to be ignored. I mean, they even had the same number of Academy Award nominations, six of which were for the exact same categories. The only difference is Slumdog is a Western film and has a lot more green boxes, including Best Picture. So this got me thinking. If Slumdog Millionaire was produced in the East instead of the West, if it was a Bollywood film instead of a Hollywood one, would it have won Best Picture? No. No, I wholeheartedly believe that it absolutely would not have won Best Picture. And it's not just cause, oh, Academy racist. No, of course not. It's actually a lot more complicated than that. Welcome to part two of a three-part series in which I explore international non-English language films at the Academy Awards. Part one was about the category Best International Feature Film. This part, part two, is about the struggle international films face to get to Best Picture. And part three will focus on the future of international films at the Oscars. You don't need to have watched part one before this, but if you'd like to, it'll be linked down below. Once again, I'll also leave all of my sources in the description if you'd like to learn more. Last video, we talked about the good and bad sides of the category Best International Feature Film. At the end, I mentioned that it's difficult enough for international films to get nominated in a category specifically curated for them, but it's a hundred times more difficult for international films to get nominated for Best Picture. But why exactly is that? At the very first Academy Awards in 1929, two categories were considered to be the most prestigious of the night. Outstanding Picture, won by revolutionary war film Wings, and Unique and Artistic Picture, won by art film Sunrise. Each award honored different but equally important aspects of filmmaking. In 1930, the category Unique and Artistic Picture was left behind, leaving just Outstanding Picture as the highest honor, and this is how it's been ever since. The name underwent a number of changes over the years. After Outstanding Picture, the name became Academy Award for Outstanding Production from 1930 to 1940, Academy Award for Outstanding Motion Picture from 1941 to 1943, Academy Award for Best Motion Picture from 1944 to 1961, and finally, Academy Award for Best Picture from 1962 to the present, still going strong. Best Picture was awarded to a representative of the production company until 1950, after which the award was given to all credited producers. In the early years of the Academy Awards, anywhere from 8 to 12 films could be nominated for Best Picture. This was later changed to a cap of 5 films, which was again changed in 2009 to a range of 5 to 10 films. At the same time of this change, voting for the nominees changed from first past the post to instant runoff or preferential voting. Nominees must receive either 5% of first place rankings or 5% after the single transferable vote nominating process. I could try and explain what that is, but I'd like to keep this video under half an hour, so pause and read if you'd like. Basically, 5% is the golden number. Best Picture is the only Academy Award category for which every Academy member is eligible to vote. Like Best International Feature Film, Best Picture has its own set of rules. Some of these rules in particular make it harder for international films to make their way into the category. The 
rules to be eligible for Best Picture include that the film must have a running length of more than 40 minutes, must have been exhibited theatrically on a 35 or 70 millimeter film or in a qualifying digital format, must open in a commercial theater for paid admission in Los Angeles County between January 1st and midnight December 31st, and run for seven consecutive days, at least three screenings daily, one of which needs to be between 6 and 10 p.m., and be sufficiently advertised in Los Angeles media. The first two requirements aren't anything super difficult, but the third requirement is where things start to get rocky. Must open in a commercial theater in Los Angeles County. And this, people, is the kicker. While in the last video I was going on about getting US distribution so more people would be able to see fantastic films, this is probably the more practical reason why studios want their films to get US distribution, because without it, they are closed off to the Academy Awards. For Western films, getting US distribution is not very hard, but for international films, it's a bit harder, which makes the road to the Oscars a bit harder. Let's use Slumdog Millionaire as our example. Let's pretend it is an Indian film produced by an Indian studio made by Indian filmmakers with an all Indian cast and crew and told mostly, if not entirely, in Hindi. So we've done the hard part. We've made a whole ass film and it's ready for release. Now what? Well, the other hard part. For an Indian film like Slumdog, it won't be hard to get it distributed in India, but to get it distributed in other countries, namely the US, there's a couple other hurdles to take into consideration. Obviously, we're going to need to find a distributor. Because distributing a film costs lots of time and money, distributors are going to want to be sure that whatever film they pick up is going to make them a sufficient return on their investment. Huge blockbusters won't have much trouble in this regard. Something like Avengers Endgame is guaranteed to bring in the money, so that's a no-brainer. A film by a beloved director or starring big names are also safer bets to go with. So if you're Christopher Nolan and your film stars Leonardo DiCaprio, you're golden. But our film, Slumdog Millionaire, is directed by an Indian director. He's relatively well known in India, but a stranger to the West. On top of that, Slumdog stars, for lack of better term, nobodies. Our lead actors are a mix of already established Indian actors and entirely new faces, so there's no drawing factor for Western distributors. Of course, we can still shoot our shot. We can arrange meetings between our studio and distributors in Hollywood, hoping we can garner some interest. But to help us with that, we need to try to hit the big three. Venice, Cannes, and Berlin. Throw in Sundance and TIFF, and that is a strong festival circuit right there. Film festivals are a fantastic opportunity for lesser known films to be shown to a wider audience, so it's a good move to make. Of course, whether or not Slumdog is accepted into every festival is another story, but let's just say that this is a perfect world and we can manage to get into every single one of them. Besides, international festivals like the aforementioned have been known to show a wide variety of films, so it's not a stretch to think we could get in. Great, we can now put these little fancy seals on all our promotional and marketing material. But getting into the festival is only the first hurdle. People also have to go see the movie. We might get reporters and reviewers, but the general public is going to be harder to convince to go see an Indian film told in Hindi with those pesky English subtitles across the bottom of the screen, especially in 2008. It's going to be doubly difficult when other more well-known English language films are being screened around or at the same time. If Slumdog manages to have a successful festival circuit, which there's no guarantee that it will, it may get more good reviews from journalists, more people may talk about the film, and more people may be interested in seeing it. Most importantly, it may attract the attention of Western distributors. If this is the case, hallelujah, we did it! Now anyone in the US will be able to watch the film and it can gain even more popularity. Or so you would think. Even if an international movie like our version of Slumdog is successful in getting US distribution, its distribution is not going to be anywhere near as wide as that of American films. Again, big blockbusters and films with already established names attached to them will take up many more screens than a relatively unknown international film, successful film festival circuit or no. On top of that, theaters don't really know how to market international films. They don't know how to make the idea of going to see a subtitled film appealing to American audiences, and they sure as hell didn't back in 2008. On top of that, a lot of the film screenings may be found in small indie theaters, to which the majority of the population don't visit. Because of these factors, most international films don't even receive wide US distribution at all. At this point, award season would be rolling around, which means it's time to decide whether or not to campaign for an Oscar. Once again, a number of factors go into making this decision. If people are excited about the film, if they're talking about it, telling other people to go watch it, pushing its name and reputation higher and higher, this is obviously making things look promising. But with Slumdog, we've got a problem. Maybe there's people talking about the film, but it's definitely nowhere near the level that other films are being talked about. Because the film is still rather obscure, what with its extremely limited theatrical release, the chances of any of our cast or crew members being interviewed or invited onto talk shows is insanely low, which means the name of our director and stars are not in people's mouths, and neither is the film's. At this point, the studio has to honestly ask itself, is it worth campaigning for an Oscar? 
With a situation like this, no, it's not. Oscar campaigns cost upwards of tens of millions of dollars. It's all for your consideration billboards and ads, and dozens and dozens of screeners and care packages sent to the homes of Academy members. All of it costs a pretty penny, so if you're gonna campaign, you've gotta be pretty damn confident with your chances of getting nominated. And what helps with those chances? Well, winning awards at film festivals and other prestigious events, having people be excited about the film, doing press interviews, talk shows, basically everything I just went over, aka everything we as an obscure international film don't have. A studio is not going to spend tens of hundreds of millions of dollars campaigning for an Oscar they know they won't get. That's why Universal completely pulled its awards funding for Cats in 2019, because they knew they wouldn't win anything. Honestly, I find it hilarious they even had awards funding for it in the first place, but that's neither here nor there. The point is that without that pre-existing clout, dreams of an Oscar nom are out. So may as well save millions of dollars and not campaign. But just because we're not campaigning for the Academy Awards doesn't mean we can't still get nominated. After all, Slumdog has met all of the Best Picture requirements, and requirements from other categories as well, so it could technically still be nominated. But here's the thing. Campaigning is such an integral part of the entire process that choosing to not campaign for an Oscar is essentially digging your own grave. Academy members don't just vote for a thing they like if they think it doesn't have a chance. It's like that with most voting. Not doing a campaign made it a self-fulfilling prophecy that we wouldn't get nominated. That really tells you a lot about the climate surrounding these Oscar campaigns. Basically, if you want to win an Oscar, you've got to throw unholy amounts of money into campaigning your film. And if you don't, well, your film will be the last on the minds of Academy voters. It won't be taken seriously as a contender. Even if an Academy member did really enjoy Slumdog and thought it deserved a Best Picture nom, they're not going to waste their vote on a film that not many people are talking about, that isn't even being campaigned. So essentially, Slumdog as an international film would have to fight to get US distribution, and if it was successful, it wouldn't get a wide release and its marketing would be abysmal, which means not a lot of people would have seen it, which means not a lot of people would be talking about it, which means it wouldn't be gaining the same amount of popularity as other films, which means come award season, our cast and crew wouldn't be interviewed or invited onto talk shows, which means their names and the film's name would remain relatively unknown, which means our Indian studio wouldn't want to throw millions and millions of dollars into an Oscar campaign, which means Academy voters wouldn't see it as a real contender, which means it would have no Oscars to its name other than possibly Best International Feature Film, a category of which I already spent a whole video explaining its flaws. <sighs> So if Slumdog Millionaire was an Indian film rather than a British one, its chances of being nominated for Best Picture would be the slimmest, and its chances of winning? Non-existent. But it's not an Indian film, it's a British one. So it didn't have nearly as much trouble getting to the US, and once it did, it was met with the popularity it wouldn't have gotten if it was international. But while Western audiences loved the film, it received less of a warm reception from India. While some audiences and film critics responded positively, others had issues, from Jamal's use of British English, to the unsavory portrayal of the Mumbai slums, to the fact that similar films by Indian filmmakers have not received equal recognition. Let me say that louder for the people in the back. Similar films by Indian filmmakers have not received equal recognition. That's another thing about all of this. The Academy is much quicker to reward Western films made by Western, usually white filmmakers who have made films about people of color rather than international films made by international filmmakers about their own people. Again, the reasoning for this is not just, ooh, Academy racist, but it's because of everything I just spent the last 10 minutes talking about. And this is not just a one-off thing. This happens a lot, where white filmmakers will tell international stories or stories about people of color and receive accolade after accolade for it, while international filmmakers telling stories that they are more well-versed in, stories that are more personal to them will not. On one hand, I know the majority of these filmmakers are well-intentioned. They just want to tell stories they find interesting. But sometimes they will take liberties that either aren't accurate or that will unintentionally and subtly perpetuate stereotypes. However, even with all of that, there are still South Asian people who love Slumdog. It's why my dad gets so excited at the mention of it. It's why I even got a little excited every time I looked it up while researching for this video and saw Academy Award for Best Picture listed as an accolade. Because while it's not an Indian film, and while it does have its issues, there's still a sense of pride there. There's still an excitement to see a film that features India so heavily get recognized on this level. I don't know why exactly that is. Maybe it's like the lack of representation in the media. Especially in 2008. I don't know. In the end, Slumdog Millionaire is a Western film, and managed to get to Best Picture much easier because of it. But 10 years have passed since then, and now both Roma and Parasite, actual international films, have gotten nominated for Best Picture, and Parasite even won. So what happened? What went right with these two films? Both 
Roma and Parasite had quite interesting, but different, journeys to Best Picture. Those journeys started with arriving in the West, with US distribution. I would say that Roma got a fantastic deal when its distribution rights were purchased by Netflix. Netflix has some misses, but it also has a fair number of hits. In recent years, Netflix has either produced or distributed some truly phenomenal projects. 2018's Roma was among the first of these to receive an Academy Award nomination for Best Picture, and in the very next year, both Marriage Story and The Irishman were also nominated. Being distributed on Netflix was a huge advantage for Roma, seeing as hordes and hordes more people were able to watch it than if it had been released in theaters. It was able to garner great popularity on Netflix all over the world. It also helped that the film was directed by Academy darling Alfonso Cuaron, who had been working in the States for a decade at that point and had already won a number of Oscars for his 2013 English language film, Gravity. On top of that, Roma's excellence sparked talk all over the internet, as well as attracted nominations for other awards like the BAFTAs and Golden Globes. The combination of Cuaron already being well known and respected in Hollywood, Roma being easily accessible on Netflix, and the huge number of awards it was garnering gave the movie the clout it needed for the studio to go through with an Oscar campaign, and lo and behold, 10 nominations, including Best Picture. Cuaron's golden reputation, along with Roma simply being a fantastic film, was able to help it in its treacherous journey to Best Picture. Parasite's story is slightly different, but no less impressive. Parasite's US distribution rights were purchased pretty early on by Neon, but like I mentioned before, the extent of its distribution paled in comparison to American films. For example, when Sonic the Hedgehog was released, it opened in 4,167 theaters across the US. Parasite opened in three. Not three in each city, not three in each state, three in the entire country. And let me remind you that the US is this big. So, it opened in three theaters across the whole country, but its extremely successful festival circuit definitely came in clutch. Parasite had premiered at Cannes, where it was met with huge critical acclaim, and even went on to win the prestigious Palme d'Or. It was also shown and loved at TIFF. From these festival wins, it gained huge amounts of popularity, getting article after article written about it, getting everyone talking about it, even getting huge Hollywood stars expressing their love for it. From there, it too received nominations for a myriad of other awards, from BAFTAs to SAGs to Golden Globes. Slowly but surely, Parasite began expanding into more theaters over a period of several months, finally reaching 2,000 theaters as of President's Day weekend. This in and of itself was a huge achievement, seeing as only 12 non-English language films had ever been released in over 1,000 US theaters, the last one being Fearless, 13 years before Parasite. Though this was a huge achievement, Parasite still only managed to get into half as many theaters in its fourth month of release as Sonic got into on its first day. Sad, but true. But Parasite was doing fairly well at the box office. People were showing up for this film, and for good reason, it's amazing. Just talking about it is making me want to rewatch it. Because of its incredible popularity and critical acclaim, a four-year consideration campaign was run and Neon absolutely pulled through. Though the company had only been started two years earlier, Neon already had experienced marketing and Oscars hopeful, and with their help, Parasite found itself with four Academy Award nominations, including Best Picture. And we all know how that ended. Parasite. <laughs> Parasite dominated that night, but it was the best picture win that skyrocketed this film into even brighter of a limelight. On President's Day weekend, the first weekend after it won Best Picture, Parasite made $6.8 million, making that weekend its highest grossing since its debut in October. In the end, Parasite grossed $53.4 million in the US and Canada, and $211.2 million in other countries, making for a worldwide total of $264.4 million. So, both Roma and Parasite were wildly successful for international films. But what's interesting to me is that while Roma seemed to have more advantages, Parasite was the film that ended up taking home the award of the night. And it's not like one film was better than the other, I'd say the quality of each film was equal to the other. While Roma was released on Netflix, making it readily accessible for a wide audience, Parasite had to fight for each theater. While Afonso Cuaron was already known and recognized by the Academy, Bong Joon-ho was less known in Hollywood and completely new to the Oscars. Which brings me to the last aspect that goes into making it to Best Picture. A big ol' heapin' pile of the luckiest luck that ever lucked. When it comes down to it, enough Academy members have to vote for the film in order for it to win. It just so happened that X number of Academy voters loved Parasite enough to rank it as their number one choice, and unfortunately, it just so happened that the number of Academy voters who chose Roma as their number one wasn't enough. And no one can control that. Everything else I talked about in this video, getting US distribution, having successful festival circuits, getting the word out about the film, running for your consideration campaigns, all of it is stuff that you have some level of control over. But at the end of the day, after you've worked your ass off to get your film into the US, after you've put millions of dollars into marketing to drive those box office sales up, after you've put even more millions and millions of dollars into campaigning the film around, after all is said and done, all that's left is filling out that ballot. And you've just gotta hope voters liked your film enough to choose it. So, 
there you have it. The insanely difficult road to getting an international film to best picture. Clearly, international films have it 10 times harder than Western ones when it comes to this highly sought after category. The same film made by both the West and international countries would have vastly different experiences on their way to best picture, and the international film would have a much higher chance of being left behind. But the 2019 and 2020 Academy Awards have proved that it is possible for international films to be nominated in this category as well as win. Roma and Parasite have both opened a door. Now the question arises, what will happen in the future? Will the door remain open, or will it be shut in our faces?